Hello everyone, I'm the International Master Maximiliano Perez and welcome to a new video for the Remote Chess Academy. Today I want to show you a really important topic and this is the Bishop Pearl. So let's start answering a really important question. Why the Bishop Pearl is an advantage? Okay, the first important thing that we have to keep in mind is that in general, in general, of course, the bishop pair is better in open positions. And the best advantage of keeping the bishop pair is that you have the total control of the board, basically, controlling the white squares and the black squares. So that is the main advantage. In general, if you are playing with the bishop pair and your opponent um, is playing, for example, with a bishop and a knight, you have to play in the color, in the different color of the uh, opponent bishop. For example, if your opponent has the white square bishop, you have to play in general for black squares. On this way, he hasn't any piece for controlling these squares. Okay, that is in general the main idea when you have the bishop pair. So, today we will see two incredible examples by two... Um, great players, no world, former world champions. And for example, in the first one, this is a game um, between Alexander Alikain with the white pieces and Ruben Fine, two incredible players. And here is the white turn. So here he played knight d6, check, bishop d6, bishop d6, and knight e4. So it's interesting to see that after knight d6, white is winning basically the bishop pair, because if uh, black doesn't play bishop takes d6, the bishop on c8 is hanging, basically, no? So, for that reason, black took on d6, and now played knight e4. And that is a really interesting idea, because, okay, yeah, I have to trade the bishop pair, but now I want to uh, catch one of the bishops. So that is the, the idea of the black pieces. So, it's quite interesting how Alekhine, with a really nice maneuver, saved this bishop. Because, for example, here, what's happened after something like bishop b4? That is the, the first question, because, well, it's a normal move. Um, coming back with the bishop, no? But where is the problem? a5, attacking the bishop. And it's incredible, but there is no square for the bishop. c3 is controlled by the knight. d2 the same. c5 the same. d6 the same. And e7 and f8 for the king. Of course, that no means that we are losing the game. For example, after bishop d2, of course, the game can continue with um, knight x d2, knight x d2, and maybe it's an equal position, right? But what is the problem? We want to keep the bishop pair. For that reason, here, Ali can choose a really nice move. And this is bishop c7. Okay? The main idea is trying to um play with the bishop on a5 and with the knight on d4 yeah like the game so knight d7 and here knight d4 a really important move because here the main idea is to for the black pieces is to play for example imagine something like e3 well the main idea is to play knight b6 and after that knight d5 with a really big pressure and after bishop a5 b6 so it's not possible to save the bishop here but Alekhine played knight d4, knight b6, and f3. That is the key move. Because after knight d5 and bishop a5, if we continue with our idea of b6, now it's possible to play f takes e4, b takes a5, and e takes d5 with a piece up. So, it's really interesting to see how Alekhine combines tactics and positional play, right? So, thanks, a uh, really good tactic can um, uh, can keep the bishop pair. So, knight e f6, now d2 is available for the bishop. Knight c2, important move, trying to avoid some kind of tricks with knight e3. Bishop d7 and e4. So now, white achieves after king d2, white achieved the goal of uh, keep the bishop pair. Of course, it's not exactly the case if white, uh, sorry, if black plays here b6. That is the best move here, in fact. After b6, 
the game can continue with e takes d5, b takes a5, d takes e6, bishop takes d6, and knight d4. And after, for example, rook d8, king e3, king d5 check, king f2, and of course, that is not a position with the bishop pair, right? But it's an advantage for the white pieces. Okay, yeah, I lost the bishop pair, but what was the price? Right. A double pawn for the opponent, a really nice position now for my king. Um, now we are threatening something like knight c6 or even knight x6. So it's a beautiful position for the white pieces. And okay, yeah, I lost my bishop pair, but for something, right? For other advantage, right? This is a transformation of the advantage. So what's, ha what's happened in the game? Well, fine played knight b6. And this is a big mistake because now white can... Uh, preserve basically the bishop pair after knight e3 castle and a4 all the white position is defended and after rook fd8 bishop d3 and this is a big advantage why for the bishop pair basically and all the black squares are weak so we can take advantage with this bishop remember the concept our advantage is a matter of colors in general here your main advantage is the bishop that can attack the squares that your opponent can defend, right? So, if I was played, rook hc1, bishop e6, and rook takes c8. Rook takes c8 and bishop b4. So, what is the idea? Maybe bishop d6 attacking the black squares, right? Knight e2, avoiding bishop d6, but a5. So, it's really interesting to see how the bishop pair controls the whole position. That is other important thing, other important advantage of the bishop pair, right? Can control many scores because it's a uh, are really important pieces, really nice pieces. For example, this column, it's impossible uh, to enter because the bishops are controlling everything, right? So knight is seven and here knight d5, other really important move and it's quite interesting to see how after bishop takes d5 e takes d5 this position is lost for the black pieces i know maybe at first sight is something like okay well but lost really yeah it's lost because the bishops are controlling the whole position of course maybe in in some game we can lost a piece for some double attack or something like this but in general if we play normal without any blunder this position is winning for the white pieces because the control of the bishops are incredibly strong for example after knight c5 with the threat of knight xd3 or knight b3 check we have bishop f5 and after rook d8 king c3 this pawn um basically uh, can be taken because king c4 attacking the rook attacking the knight with the without decisive advantage for the white pieces so b6 was played defending the knight a takes b6 a takes b6 and here bishop takes c5 what is the other advantage of the bishop pair you can trade the bishop whenever you want that is pretty important because it's easier to trade a bishop for a per a knight than a knight for a bishop so that is an advantage in general so b takes c5 b6 so here uh, ale can trade exchange basically the advantage of the bishop pair for two pass pawn so that is the other important thing after the control of the bishops of the position well he trade one of the bishop for a winning endgame so knight d6 bishop d7 rook takes c7 and rook a8 check um checkmate in the next moves well a nice example of bishop pair but i have another one and this is a game by vladimir kramnik another incredible player against mikhail ulivin so this is a really interesting position arising by a queen's indian defense it's really interesting to see that here the best move for the black pieces is knight takes c3. That is quite important because in the game, Olivin played knight d8. Maybe at first sight an innocent move. No, because, well, he's defending the e6 pawn and the main idea is after d takes c6 to take with the knight. No, so to retake with the knight. So, yeah, 
looks like as a really normal move, like a really interesting idea. But what is the problem? The main problem is after DTX 6 now it's not possible to take Knight C3 for the intermediate move it takes f7 check with the uh, advantage of a pawn, right? So he can he should take on e6 and here bishop b4, nice move by Kramny, preserving basically the bishop pearl, right? So okay, maybe at first sight it's not a big advantage because bishop d7 is pretty normal, but that is other mistake because now it's possible to play knight e5. And after knight c5, c5, six c5, knight takes d7, knight takes d7, and this position is a slight but really important advantage for the white pieces. Why? Basically, we have the bishop pair, and he has a double knight. As I told you, this type of situations in general are better for the white pieces. That is because the position is not exactly closed. If the position is closed, maybe it's different. There are, in fact, some positions where, even in closed situations, the bishop pair is, are better, right? But in general, in general, the knights are a little bit uh, better in closed position. But this is not a closed position. This is an open position. For that reason, bishops are better here. Castle, a5, bishop a3, and rook f8. So, here, b3. Well, what is the interesting thing and why many players um, have some difficulties playing this kind of position? Because I know that many players know that um, this kind of position are better for the bishop pair, but in general, has some problems. Why? Because the important thing to understand is that this kind of position, you have to play slowly. Slowly improving your position step by step and trying to avoid the opponent plans. That is a problem. Many players want to play tactically this kind of situations. For that reason, um, are not able to understand the, the ideas are, and, of course, are not able to find the best moves. For example, b3 improving the bishop. b6, bishop b2. It's quite interesting to see how step by step Kramnik is improving his position. Rook d8, queen d4, queen f6, queen takes f6, knight d takes f6, rook fd1, improving the last piece, the rook, right? h6 and e3. So, why this position is better for the white pieces? Because at first sight it's something like equal, no? Well, the interesting thing is the bishops are controlling the whole position. For example, this bishop is excellent place here and this bishop the same, right? Controlling both diagonals, right? And the main problem for the black pieces is that with the knights, it's pretty difficult to improve the position, right? So we will see how step-by-step Kramnik is improving and pressuring the black position. So knight d7, king f1, rook e7, king e2. Yeah, the last moves are all uh, thinking about improving the white position, right? Rook d8, g4. Now is the last advantage of the bishop pair. In general, how we can control the position, right? We can control uh, with the range of the bishops. We can advance our pawns. It's easier. But with the knights, a little bit more difficult because we need both knights in the same side. For example, on the queen side or in, on the king side. With the bishops, we can control the king side, for example, with the black square bishop and the queen side with the white square bishop. That is what is happening right now, no? With the bishop controlling here and with this bishop controlling. So we are controlling all the whole board. That is the main advantage of the bishop pair. So rook e6 h4. We can advance basically because are controlled by the bishops. Rook c6 e7 and here bishop f3. Knight d c5 and rook d5. Knight a6 and a3. So here at first sight these advance are a little bit annoying no? for the white pieces but it's quite interesting to see the next. Knight a6, b5, knight c5. We can say oh my god this knight is really really good right because it's a strong outpost what is the problem okay yeah i know this is a great outpost but 
in general, we have to think in these kind of situations. What is exactly that this knight is doing in this situation, in this square? Because, okay, yeah, it's a nice post, right? Yeah, I understand that. But what is the main idea of this knight? What is doing? For example, I don't know. Knight b3 is the idea. Knight d3, defending the other knight. There is no aggressive idea for the for the for this knight. And that is the problem, okay? Um maybe we can think, okay, yeah, I understand that, but what is the advantage of these pawns? Well, there is an advantage. These pawns are controlling three pawns. So in the other side, on the king side, we have a pawn, a virtual pawn up. So here, rook a1, important move controlling the a file, knight f6, rook dd1, knight fe4, rook a7 controlling the queen side. And that is the important thing. With the bishop pair, we can control both sides. That is the interesting thing. King f8, and here an amazing move by crime. The g5, excellent move, sacrificing a pawn. But it's incredible how the bishop, the strong the strength, sorry, of the bishop pair. H takes g5, h takes, knight takes g5, and bishop 6-6, six, six, and this position is incredibly strong for the white pieces, even with a pawn down. Because look the activity of these bishops. For example, rook c8, rook h1, king g8, rook a1. So, now, black has to defend the queen side and the king side at the same time, with uh, no... Um, a lot of space and with two knights basically it's impossible knight c6 rook h4 great move with the idea of rook h1 and rook h8 checkmate right f6 rook g1 king f7 bishop d5 now look these bishops are incredibly strong king a8 rook h8 check knight f8 and f4 step by step kramnik is Struggling basically the no the, the, the black position knight e6 king f3 f5 and here rook g6 well with a pawn down um black is under uh a big pressure right it's totally controlled by the white pieces knight c5 was played but here after bishop takes g7 the position is totally lost so rook f7 was played but here even no bishop takes f7 here is better bishop takes f8 and here Ulivin resigns because after rook takes f8 takes takes rook g8 check king is 7 rook takes c8 and with a rook up and of course this position is totally win for the white pieces so this is this last game is incredible for understanding the power of the bishop pair. Even um, in some positions, a bishop pair is um, stronger than a pawn. So that is pretty important to understand. Of course, in this situation, it's because um, there were two bishops against two knights. So two bishops against two knights in a semi-open or open position are incredibly strong. No, so. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson, that you understand the concepts. Of course, if you have some doubt about this, you can ask us in the comments. And don't forget to like and to share with your friends. So thank you very much. I'm the International Master Maximiliano Perez. And see you in the next video for the Remote Chess Academy. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.